Welcome to Violin Adventures number 180. This week we get the 1700s violin put back together and played and then shipped back out. And then we work some more on the pochette. All right, it's time to work on our 1700s violin. I am going to rub the varnish down first and then we'll do a deep polish. So here you can see it took some of the shine down and just makes it look a bit richer, but we're not done yet. Our beautiful 1700s violin is all set up and ready to play it for the first time. It's got the good sound, but it's not quite responding correctly. I got to make a little adjustment on the placement of the bridge and the sound post and I'll be right back. Okay, I made adjustments to the bridge and sound post. There's always that. Once you get a new coat of varnish on an instrument, there's always that period where it's gotta wake up again a little bit. So, here it goes. to put in a little taller sound post. Sometimes instruments do this. They will start expanding if they're, if the vibrations are really good, sometimes the instrument will expand. And it could be that this expanded a little bit from the last playing. And okay, finally, got a good sound post in here quite and Let's hear how it sounds. The violin has more
your strength of tone right now. It needs to be played quite a bit. description of the tone. We had a real good rain last night. It's still raining but not so hard. But if you can see that the creek is up to the top there. I'll zoom in rather than walk down there. There it is. Well, I'm getting ready to send this nice violin back to its owner. So I'm going to play it for the last time and it just needs to be played a lot. I think since we have the new varnish on and a new sound post it's given it more power. so much being as old as it is. So I'm very happy with this violin. and I've been carving the back and I'm satisfied with the tone. It's such a little tiny instrument that the hardest part is holding it still while I'm trying to carve it. 
So now I'm going to take the ribs out of the mold and start on the next steps, preparing to work on the top next. the ribs loosened and I'm just gonna get this out here it is okay so the next thing I need to do is get the lining in on this side so we'll heat up the glue and get started off of the lining. I'm going to take down the blocks and the lining and then we'll glue it together. to the back. All right, back to our reading. We have to find out what was in the sixth box, and we're reading out of Violins and Violinists, published in 1950. And if you remember that Mr. Teresio had passed away and he was a great collector of instruments. Um, and we'll read more about him later. But he had passed away and his nephews had inherited everything that he had and were very pleased with the amount of money they received. And they they cared nothing for the instruments. They considered it worthless junk. And so Viome, who is a very famous violin maker, uh, who became very famous, uh, he heard the news because he knew that Teresio had been collecting instruments. And so he hurried over there to find out what would become of the instruments and as he knelt on the floor, there were every box that he opened was a beautiful specimen of some violin. And so now he's come to the sixth box. The greatest surprise, however, was the sixth box, the opening of which took some time, as a number of iron bands had first to be jimmied off of it. When Viome at last took out the violin and held it up in the poor light of the candles, he cried out with joy. There it was, the Messiah violin, safe and sound as though Stradivari had just completed it, a shimmering jewel, mysteriously alluring with the pent-up magic of its tone. For this instrument had never been played. Count Salabu had purchased it from Stradivari's heirs and kept it in his collection for 60 years. I don't have a picture of the Messiah Strad, but they say this one is very similar. In 1824, Teresio had succeeded in persuading the Count's heirs to sell him this invaluable masterpiece, yet he could never make up his mind to show it to his business friends. 
At that moment, Viome understood why the old violin collector would rather have died than part with this instrument. Viome had to spend the night in the farm, as there was no inn in Fontanetto. The next morning, he drove into Milan with the nephews, the violins carefully secured in the coach. Later on, Viome often recounted how on that day he experienced the greatest joy of his life. In the untidy, dirty attic, he found no less than 144 violins, violas, and cellos. There were two dozen Stradivaries from all the three periods of the master's career, a small Guarneri del Gesù, and two others, four Nicola, Nicola Amatis and a viola by Gasparo de Salo. Viome did not know which way to look in his admiration of all these wonders. There was no master of Italy's great epic of violin making who was not represented in this grandiose array of instruments. Including the six bound at Fontanetto, there were 150 of them altogether. Viome felt that it would be unwise to make a thorough investigation as he would have drawn the heir's attention to the immense value of their inheritance. So he took out his wallet and unbuckled the heavy belt he wore under his clothes. Then he counted his cash. I have 80,000 francs on me, he announced. The nephews hastened to complete the deal. They had never expected so much money. Thus, Fionn bought one of the most magnificent collections at a price which was well nigh ridiculous. The instruments must have been worth at least 2 million francs at that time, and it is very likely that Fionn got appreciably more than that when he resold them later on, for he died a rich man. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get ready to start carving seriously on our pochette scroll. Derechecha Hashem Hodi'eni or Hotecha Lamdeni. Show me or make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. If you know where this is found, please leave it in the comments below. And if you have a favorite verse you'd like me to read in the Hebrew, Please put that in the comments below. Hi, hi, I'm Freddy, and my boss said I need to come out and talk to you guys, but it's been raining so much that I was hiding in my, under my covers, and now my boss got me an umbrella so I can go and I won't be afraid of the rain anymore. So see, here's my umbrella. Isn't that nice? I like it. Well, I have some good news. My grandpa went and got another set of beats, and they just came in the mail this morning. And so, here they are.
Don't forget to send in all your projects that you're working on. And don't forget the 200th episode. Bye! Here we are Friday afternoon with lots of rain this week. And I came out here because I saw our heron bird. But he's gone now. Just a reminder for our 200th episode, which is coming up in 20 more episodes. I'm asking all of you who watch to send in a picture or a video of what you're working on. And it can't, doesn't have to be related to music. It can be anything. Now I've heard from a few of you out there. Thank you so much. And I'm waiting to hear from more of you. Just send in something that you're working on. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your wonderful comments. Thank you for your thumbs up. And thank you to the new subscribers. And until next time, bye. Okay, I'm getting ready to pack the violin up. I have the two pieces of music that were in with the violin and I wanted to play those here. Upon the Lord from Elijah, written by Felix Mendelssohn. <laughs>